Sydney, one of the most famous places in the world and I have actually been here eight times before and that's why in this video I will have focus on why it might not be worth visiting or why it might be worth visiting because I've been here as a travel guide and I have had guests who say was that it and understanding their disappointment and I have had people who were like crazy in love with this place. So today I'm gonna tell you what you need to know to have the best possible experience. Why you might not want to come here. I'm gonna tell you a lot about the history and then I'm hoping to show you a few places that other people haven't showed you in Pamukkale because I know a little bit that others don't. So let's start the video from where the video is supposed to start. It's around 11 o'clock on the 2nd of June and we're lucky that there's not that many people here. To get in they wanted to see our HES code and the ticket is 110 lira unless you have a museum card like we had and therefore we could go in for free. When you get to the white part you have to take your shoes off otherwise you're not allowed to walk up. There was a lady with a hand locked back that she's planning to walk up with. She's gonna have a really hard day. The first thing there is to know is that Pamukkale is an extremely popular place. There comes thousands of thousands here every single day. And normally there come very big uh, bus tours, group tours, which take up a lot of space. Like we are lucky today that there's not that many people and still we ended up running into a giant group of Arabics that blocked everything, that was from the beginning very respectless and that made a dance party in the middle of everything. <laughs> so have patience because that's a really important part because everybody else wants to see it just like you want and they might not have the same thinking about it as you have. So the surface that you walk on here is Corp and Caponat and that one is hardened over time. It's generally not slippery, uh, it's harder to walk on it when it's really wet and of course easier when it's dry. Today it's really dry and that changes almost every day. I know that a lot of people think that the water just comes by itself but it is actually regulated by the people here to make sure that all areas of Pamukkale gets enough water because if it gets too little water it will dry out and break and if it gets too much water it will start to become green which they also don't want. So there's a big regulation of where the water goes so one day there might be water in one pool and the next day there might be water in a different pool. The real pronunciation is Pamukkale, not Pamukkale. Pamukkale and in Turkish Pamuk means cotton and Kale means castle, so it's cotton castle. So this is one of the areas where you can see that it's not always pretty and white all the time. It is also green and dirty. Just don't come and think everything is snow white. A lot of it is snow white, some of it is not. There's actually three entrances into Pamukkale and we took the one down from the street where we parked our car. And this is the entrance that fewest people use because there's very little parking and the tour buses normally go to the upper parking. That also meant that the first long part of the walk we had to ourselves because the people coming from the upper entrance normally walk halfway down and then walk back up again. There's also a third entrance out at Heapolis which very few people use and there's also quite a long walk from Heapolis to here. An important thing to know is that Pamukkale came on the UNESCO list in 1988. And there's more to see than just this white part that is always on the postcards. There's the theater, there's the Cleopatra pool, there's an archaeological museum, there's the Heropolis, which was a very big city during the first century. And then there is of course the ordinal pools, which I'm gonna take you to now and explain you why they're closed. Pamukkale becomes pretty clear because now you can see the area where people are allowed to walk and you can also see the original pools, the ones that is always on postcards. 
Since the 1990s, has not been allowed to swim in the ordinal pools because in the 1990s, around 20,000 people a day were coming here to swim. But they were covered in sunscreen and makeup and sweat, which started to break down the ordinal pools and made them gray and green and not very pretty to watch at. So in 1992, they started a rescue of the ordinal pools and that's why they're closed off today. The thing that I've heard that most people got disappointed about with Pamukkale was that the white area wasn't bigger and I always ask them like how much did you actually see? And they normally just tell me that they walked halfway down and up again and that was it. And I normally tell them that you haven't seen Pamukkale at all because there's all of the white here on the other side of the mountain. But there is also the museum, the Cleopatra pool, the Phillips grave and then there is the entire city. So I'm continuing this video. The white part is over from this Pamukkale video. Now I'm going to show you all of the things that you should also take the time to see when you visit Pamukkale. So this is the archaeological museum and that is inside the old bath. And it used to be that you had to get a separate ticket to get in here. But since one month ago, they actually put it together, so it's included in the normal ticket for Pamukkale. And in this area, you can see some of the things they have found while excavating the Heropolis. There's also some money, there's some graves, there's some statues. And it's actually really cute to see and put more of the Pamukkale story together. Next up is Cleopatra's Pool, which is also one of the areas that a lot of people know here because it's very beautiful. So you can for free walk into the area, but if you want to swim in the pool, it's an extra ticket. And last time I was here, it was 35 lira, but I know it went up, so let's go see. It's a hundred lira now, that's like, that's like a lot of money for a lot of people. Like in Turkey, the general salary for one day is a hundred lira. It is 50% off if you have a museum card, but most people don't have that. I feel a little nauseous. We can see the woman filling water. And when I come as a guide, I always have a local guide with me. That's the law. And I came here with my guest and the local guide was like, fill up your water bottles with this water. It's like healing and stuff. Until I looked down and realized that the water you're pumping up is exactly the same water that hundreds of people right now is swimming in. So you're just drinking people. I've actually never swimmed in Cleopatra's pool and if you want to do it, you're of course welcome. But let me give you the reasons why I have not done it. First of all, there is not a lot of filtering in this water. A lot of the water is actually very dirty and there's a lot of people in this water all the time. There's also some big like ruined stones inside that are very slippery, as I have heard. And there's normally a photographer jumping around inside taking photos of people, including the people who take photos of each other. And I'm generally okay with photos, of course. I also like my own photos, but I do not so much like to be in a bikini and then be background photo for someone I don't know. There's also a lot of people that believe that this was originally Cleopatra's pool and that the ruins inside the water are original. And a local guy told me that that's a lie. Cleopatra has never swimmed in this pool and the ruins that are inside the water has been thrown in. So they are man-made designed to look like they do because they do look pretty. But please don't think that you are swimming in a big historical places with very unique things. <laughs> You're just swimming in a dirty pool with a lot of other people. Safa only wants to see two more things and we both agreed on seeing the theater. You want to see Herpolis and I want to see Philip's grave, so... We're gonna see Herpolis. So Safa won, which means that we're gonna visit the theater and hear police and we're skipping the grave of Philip. But that doesn't mean you're not allowed to hear the history because I would love to tell it to you. So the Apostle Philip, also known as the Disciple Philip, is said to be killed here in 80 AD. He started missionarying after Jesus was crucified and ended here in Heropolis, where he tried to spread the word of Christianity which was not very popular at the time and that's probably why he got killed. So there's two stories about why he got killed. The first one is that he healed the wife of the city overhead. 
the bars of the city with a few miracles and some hocus pocus. The head of the town got really angry about that because he didn't use the traditional way that they normally do and got so angry that he got him killed. The second story is that he got stoned and killed here because he removed the dragon out of one of the temples and that's apparently also not something that you should do. They've been searching for the grave of Philip for a lot of years, but they actually didn't find it until 2011. They have been searching in an area for many, many years, but they believe that his grave was, and real grave was actually around 35 meters away from there. So I believe there's some people who might feel a little bit stupid for not looking just a little bit further over all of these years. But that means that you can today see the grave and uh, I've been up there before and I will put some photos here so you can see how it looks, the area that we're not going to go to because we're going to hear police and the feet. Walking up to the theater is not easy, I will say that, but it is worth coming up to because it's really, really pretty. And what makes this theater a little cooler than some of the other Turkish theater is that a lot of the state building is still here, which they are normally not. They are normally collapsed in earthquakes or different kind of storms, but it's still here and that looks super cool. We have now walked down to the ancient city of Heropolis, which is actually what normally Pamukkale is being called from the outside. When you're driving here, you will see signs to Heropolis, not so much to Pamukkale. And still, this is also the part of Pamukkale that least people visit. So it's a big ancient city and around year zero, there lived 50,000 people here. It is known to be a place where soldiers came to when they were hurt in battle and then they spent some time swimming in all the pools and resting here so they were ready to get back in battle. It was also a very popular place to die and I do not remember why but apparently people wanted to die here. You want me to show you what's over here? Toilets. So back in the days you could come here and sit and poop with your friends. And if you want to see some much better ancient, well-preserved toilets, then you should go see our Ephesus video. So this video has been highlighting both the good and the bad things, but also the historical things that there is here. And if you ask me, I definitely recommend that everybody comes here. Show respect, but still come here, because this has been my ninth time being here. I spent the video showing you the white part of Pamukkale, the one that you always see in travel books and on postcards and in other travel videos that don't tell you that much. But I've also tried to show you a lot of the other things that you can see here. So I hope that you feel like Pamukkale is a place you want to be, you want to come. And then I want to finish the video here. If you have something to say, please write me a comment, any questions and so on. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> let me give you your but let me give me but let us start at the beginning while we get uh, can you run down and film the stage building